For those of you that aren't familiar, hang on, get my chat going. <coughs> oh yeah, Cusco, that's who it is. No, is it? Yeah, his name is Cusco. Cusco. No, Cusco. Cus Cusco. Cusco. Let me see. Share computer sound. When I say no touchy, it is. Let's go. Whoa, no touchy. No touchy. No touch. No touchy. Let's go. Whoa, no touchy. No touchy. No touch. That's what I was talking about. No touchy. That's David Spade, right? Yes, it is. Okay. All right. Moving on. It is time to talk about the next to last thing. The fuel manifold valve. Fuel fuel manifold valve. valve. All right. It has two functions. Two functions. The other one had three functions. Didn't I write three for that one, for the Bendix? Oh, I did. I remember what they are. Does anybody remember what the three functions of the other one was? Fine group of people you are. No. Maybe it'll come to you. You can see what I left out. It has two functions. One. One, distributes fuel evenly to all cylinders. Distributes fuel evenly to all cylinders. Janet, you're late. You missed Cusco or uh, Cusco. She was actually on time for that. Oh, was she? Oh, okay. I was just seeing that the, I can see out the corner of my eye, the thing changing. I was trying to figure who just showed up, but I saw SpongeBob. I didn't see SpongeBob last time. It's very colorful. It's, can't miss it. Um, two provides, provides positive fuel shutoff. And the Bendix had a third one. Come on, nobody can remember the third one? No. Very good. I'm yeah. looking through my notes. V slot. What about the V slot? Idle. The flow at lower speeds? It what? Regulates flow at low speeds. That's it. Had the V slots in it. All right. Continental, in my opinion, goes through rather great lengths. Well, maybe not great lengths, but they definitely have designed their manifold valve to not do any regulating whatsoever. They do not want it to regulate. So how do they do that? To, it uses a spring-loaded diaphragm. It uses... It uses a spring loaded diaphragm. Diaphragm that lifts off its seat. That lifts off its seat. Lift off its seat. Um, I should, yeah, when, when it gets enough fuel pressure, obviously, the fuel lifts it off its seat. Um, there is a little poppet valve. Ooh, wow, there's no little does not begin with the T, it begins with an L. Little poppet valve, poppet valve, poppet valve. I'm going to say inside, inside the Big poppet valve. <laughs> poppet valve. That keeps fuel from flowing. That keeps fuel from flowing until 
uh, proper fuel pressure is released and then probably keeps flowing until proper pressure until proper proper pressure is achieved. So in other words, they don't want it dribbling. If you, if, it, if you don't have enough fuel pressure coming out of the fuel pump, going through the fuel control unit to the fuel manifold valve, the fuel manifold valve is not supposed to work. And that is a, a little bit of a problem if you only have a single poppet valve, uh, like the Bendix style where you just, it comes underneath the diaphragm and the diaphragm slowly starts lifting. Well, this, the same thing would happen with this one, even though it doesn't have V slots, it's still gonna have openings. And if you get the, the diaphragm to slowly open just a little bit, fuel is going to dribble out. So it, you don't want that to dribble out. You want it to uh, open only when it's appropriate. So they have a way of doing that. So I'll put that. This keeps the distributor valve. Valve from regulating fuel, from regulating fuel. This, by this, I mean the little poppet valve. Um, there is a vent, vent on top of the distributor valve. Valve must always be um, kept away from right now. Kept away from ram air from ram air and ram air is air that is coming from the from the front of the aircraft into the uh, inlets there to cool the aircraft because this uh distributor valve actually sits on top of the engine that's bolted up there so uh, it is usually it is usually facing aft or side or facing facing aft or on the side Did you guys hear Jay There's something about being really low is really happy <laughs> He's in the bedroom next to my office playing Fortnite. He's, the kid is always happy. He's in a perpetual state of happiness. Maybe that's because he gets to play Fortnite all day. <laughs> so this Corona pretty much made him all really happy that he's home all the time. He's home all the time anyway. <laughs> How old is he? Uh, eight or nine, something like that. Eight. Okay, here's the distributor valve. Here's the vent. See, what bugs me is that I can't, you can't read vent, at least on my screen, it's like too blurry. I think that's where I need my HD camera. So this is the vent and you can see this, these are the bolts that would go through the spine of the, of the uh, back of the engine uh, on top. And of course you would never want this facing forward because if ram air comes in here and pressurizes the top of this, it's going to assist the spring and pushing down on the diaphragm, which would be a bad thing. So this has to be the front of the engine right here, and that has to be the back. So fuel is gonna come up into here, and it's going to pressurize this. I'll take it apart and open it out the nozzles. This hole right here is going to be the uh, fuel flow gauge. I haven't opened this one up yet, so could be surprised here. You'll see monkeys in there. Maybe a, I know, Black Widow or something. All right. 
So we take that off and we'll see here, all we have a little itty bitty tiny vent, but I don't even know if you can see that right down inside there, which faces this way. And that just keeps this from being pressurized in here. So this is obviously the spring that is pushing down on this. And let's see, old dried up crusty, there we go. And there's the main poppet right there. There's really not much else to it. And that's just a, a hole down there. So in the same way we had the other one, fuel would come up through here, through the screen and up. So um, on annual inspections, I like to pull this off and take a look at least with the a flashlight, make sure there's no debris or anything down in there. And so fuel is gonna come up through there. It's gonna take, it's gonna press on the diaphragm. It's gonna raise up the diaphragm. Fuel then is gonna enter these little holes right there right there, and then flow down here into the hole there and then out to the nozzles, which is really not much else to it, except, waiting for my Kevin. Yeah. That one doesn't have the chamfer, right? The V-slots? No. No, the, the chamfer on the, on the head. Chamfer. Yeah, the, the one that we took apart yesterday was like chamfered, not really a V. Oh, no, that's why the other one is weird. It's like, I'm, I'm almost, in some ways it looks like combing in other ways it looks continental and and, I'll, and I'll, it has that chamfer on there which leads me to think that it's it's acting like a bit of a v-slot and i don't know what happened to my uh, screwdriver my pointer so you know, but this one's very blunt but i'm going to see if i can switch cameras here because you know how much you love that but see if we can see something all right so if i look down in there I said fuel is going to flow into these these holes on the side. Whoa, it's hard to do. There we go. Holes on the side. I may have to hold this and turn this. There we go. Those holes, and then down. Well, now when I do that, you can see there's something inside that hole. If I would get it back there and quit screwing around, there's something inside that hole. That's the poppet inside of the poppet, and so fuel is going to enter into this. I got it upside down. Remember that fuel is gonna flow into that little, that hole right there, and it's gonna build up pressure around the diaphragm, and then the diaphragm is gonna lift up. It's gonna lift up till it's just above the parting surface like that, and then fuel is gonna flow into that hole, and then from that hole, it enters into, sorry, I'm trying to pull it back out. You'll have to tell me if doing that is just obnoxious and I'll stop doing it. All right, so then the fuel enters into these little holes, goes down in there, but inside there, there's this little poppet. So remember, um, talk about surface area versus pressure. So there's a lot of surface area, so it won't take very much pressure to build up enough uh, pressure to lift this thing up against the spring and hopefully not against ram air. So now it's open but it takes quite a bit of pressure on the very, very tiny little piston that's inside of there. And so what happens when the pressure builds up enough inside of that poppet, the inside poppet is spring loaded and it pops down and it allows fuel to go around it on the inside. And so that's the second poppet. So you got poppet one, then poppet two. And so that pops open suddenly and then fuel starts flowing. And then when fuel starts, when it diminishes, uh, the inside poppet quickly closes cutting off all fuel, and then remember the little secret passage, then I, that will kind of drain off or it'll, and allow this thing to settle back down and be completely shut off. So Kevin, it goes through the big poppet first, then the small poppet? Yep, well, okay, so this, this lifts up and remember that fuel goes in, in through here, through here, up the screen, lifts this up, and then it goes into that little hole right there, down the center of, of this, out here, and then down there where the holes are. Gotcha. Kevin. Yeah. Can we see inside of that hole? Okay. You mean like I've got it right now? Uh, well, yeah, that one and the other one too, where the uh, little poppet is. Uh, if the focal length isn't quite right, but can you see the holes on the sides? Yeah. There you go. Oh, there we go. That looks good. 
Okay. Yeah, that's better. Okay. So that's that. You can see even on the screen over here on the side, uh, right there. Oh, I had it. The inlet. Does that screen come out to clean or do you have to clean it where it is? Um, I've taken them out, but you tend to damage them. Let me see. I think I've, I think I've worked. Hang on. Let me just if I can pop this one out. I've worked most of these so they come out. Do you need to uh, change the screen on overhaul? Um, I would. Okay. But I don't overhaul these. That's for sure. All right. So screen is out. There we go. Right is left. Left is right. Up is down. It's like trying to shave the back of your own neck. All right. And so then we have the holes down there which will go out to the nozzles. And then what was the other thing you wanted to see? Inside of there? I think Hector wanted to see the little poppet inside the big poppet. Well, you really wouldn't even know there's anything in there. It is so hard to see anything. And that little poppet just opens by pressure. Oh, wait a minute. This is really... <laughs> I cannot move it the right way. In the middle, in the middle. <laughs> I'm trying. Go there. I gotta, okay, look at. Are you gonna so see the spring? Oh, spring. Yeah. Where is the spring. Yeah. So here's the spring in there in the poppet. It is tiny. Hey, if anybody wants to borrow that to check your tonsils, let me know before I use it for checking. Check on the other side. That was a bad joke. Wow. I don't have to <laughs> <go. laughs> I know my wife's like, what do you got there? I'm like, hey, don't forget, you know, I mean, Katie's not feeling well. I do have an uh, endoscope. I said, you're just going to want to make sure that you use it on the, on the top before you check the bottom. <laughs> but I'm when does that happen? Thank you. I'll be here. When you're 60, right? When you're 50? Uh, no, I'm, I'm past 50. And I haven't done... Well, we're already getting pretty personal here. I haven't had that done yet. Kaiser is different. They, uh, they make you do a different test. We don't have to talk about that. Uh, <laughs> okay. Um, where, am order. I, where am I with my notes? Okay. Well, now I'm really running out of room on my desk. To, all right. Um, let's see. Okay. Right. Well, that's really it. That's it for that thing. And now we can talk about nozzles. And like I told you, the nozzles for this thing well, if you're not careful, you cannot tell the difference between a, a, a Lycoming nozzle and a Continental nozzle. Uh, they are really almost the same. So, in fact, it's going to get worse. So, basic, I don't even write that. So, nozzles. Nozzles, one. Basically the same as Bendix. Basically the same as Bendix. They look the same, act the same, same functions, everything is the same. Um, it does have a letter, a letter stamped, stamped on wrench flats. Just like Bendix, um, except flats um, is a calibrated flow rate, is a calibrated, calibrated flow rate. And the way they do it is they've got three of them. So you have the A, the B, and the C. And A is baseline, is the baseline nozzle. The B is going to give one half gallon per hour, one half gallon per hour more than A. And C is going to be one gallon per hour more than A. So just basically oversized? Yeah, that's all they are. And I've never even gotten into needing it. If somebody's complaining about a flow rate or something, I just go right to GAMI and say, well, you know what? I, I would recommend you get GAMI injectors rather than 
you know, trying to pay a mechanic to figure out this flow rate and only using a one half gallon or one gallon more per hour. It's like Gammy gets so down into the nitty gritty. And then even that, it's like, okay, well, that's all fine and well. Um, that one says 10. <laughs> so I don't know what the heck a 10 is, you know, just stamped with a 10. Maybe this was a Gammy injector or something, but um, I showed this, I actually used a Bendix injector when we talked about injectors. For, I'm sorry, I used a Continental injector when we talked about injectors for the Bendix system. And what I'm going to cut out here is I actually, you know, as I've, I have learned over the years, I get way in depth and I went into this, this big deal about how to adjust these things and I got into the service bulletin and, and quite honestly, I think it would bore you to tears. It almost bores me to tears just uh, talking about it because it's, it's very technical and it's, it's like, it would be like me trying to explain to you how to overhaul an engine, which you know how to do, uh, by writing it out. You're like, oh man, that is, that is not fun. So um, I pretty much, you know, talk to you about, about the adjustment. You've got the no touchy. And to adjust it, you have to follow the service bolt. And it's not terribly difficult. It's just time consuming and you have to make sure you do a good job. Um, when I was talking to, talking to, I went to a, an IA renewal and I watched this guy twice and it was just, I, uh, he was with the NTSB and I told you guys about him. I, I would go watch this guy speak anytime, even if it's the same subject. It's like, man, it's just, it's so interesting. And, um, oh, there's our, our, our diaphragm. I don't keep, keep my thought going here with the same one. Uh, it was so interesting. And uh, one of the accidents that he uh, covered the aircraft had one of these fuel injection systems and it had crashed and he was there doing the investigation and there on the investigation, they had a, um, you know, here's a, like a red cap and not, not like this one, but um, a threaded red cap, which we do use in aviation. We pull off hoses. Uh, like if I were working on this and I had to change out all the hoses, I would take the hoses off and I would put plastic caps on all of the fittings. Right. And I think, didn't we have one? One picture with the nice plastic caps. So we can just say this is what I'm talking about. Yes, we do. Similar to this, like this has plastic caps there. Uh, this has the black ones over here. This is all capped there. Um, and so at the accident scene, there was a plastic, red plastic cap laying at the, in the dirt uh, right there in, in the engine. So the engine sitting in the dirt and he took a look at the engine and there was a T fitting going off into one of these, these fittings right here. And I'll show you what I mean by the T fitting, which you've already seen. So right here, slide. There was a T fitting right here, which isn't normally there, or they taken one of these out and put the T here, which is where we sometimes do it. And there was a red cap put right here on this thing and it blew the red cap off. All the fuel went out this way, this way. Of course, the engine's gonna shut down and I don't know, killed the people or whatever. And what he didn't say, but what I, I instantly recognized is that somebody was doing fuel control setups and they had put the T in there, which wasn't normally there, or sometimes these T's are there, but they have a metal cap on it. Whoever did it, put a plastic cap on, just blew it off and that was the end of that. But um, this particular picture, as I've already shared with you, it comes out of the service instruction for how to set up and do fuel controls. So you put in one fuel pressure here for the unmetered, um, unmetered from the pump, and then you do another one for metered fuel pressure because it's after the fuel control unit, therefore it's metered. And that's how you set the whole thing up. Well, I think that was about it for the pictures I had. We had the no touchies. We looked at those and you guys saw these. This is, the result of over priming an engine with this system because that is a continental so this is exactly what happened just ran it for i said less than 30 seconds I'm like wow that was a long long time um i'm looking for oh already right there all right so one last thing i think um i was going to bring up here on this system is that when we talk about turbocharged engines we're going to talk a little bit about how it ties in this system. So turbo, turbocharged systems. 
So they do have something that attaches to these and they like to use. So number one, if you're gonna use turbocharged, we were talking about this, nozzles, nozzles are modified, modified to incorporate, incorporate a shroud, a shroud with upper deck air pressure. upper deck pressure uh, around the air inlet, air inlet of the nozzle that is. All right, then the next thing that these systems use is they use an altitude compensating um, fuel valve, an, al an altitude compensated Compensating um, fuel valve. Okay. Yeah, well, I want a better word here. Altitude compensating. Well, I wrote fuel valve before. I'll just leave with that. Fuel valve, you'll see what it is, is incorporated, is incorporated in the fuel pump. In the fuel pump. Let me go over here to my service instruction. Let's see if I have a picture of that by chance. Yeah, this will work. Not a great drawing, but right, where did it go? There we go. So this upper, well, they both have it. But it would, um, so aneroid, you ever see aneroid, that's what we're talking about. So an alt um, you know what an aneroid is, not an android, but it's gonna attach down here to the fuel pump. So aneroid adjustment, um, factory set adjustment, not normally required. So what that does is it is going to basically slow down the pump in a way, um, slow down its reaction to uh, compensate for turbo lag. So what happens with turbochargers is it there they have to spool up so you have to think about and we'll talk more about how they work but um they work off exhaust pressure so if i open up the uh if i open up the throttle and i try and increase the engine speed well now i want more pressure from the turbocharger but it takes a minute for to open the throttle valve and for the air to go through the intake system into the engine from the engine build up pressure speed up the turbocharger and now the turbocharger is going to give me enough air to, to satisfy the need that I created a minute ago. So everything is a, a, is a slow reaction with the turbocharger. And they refer to that as turbo lag. And the bigger the turbo gets, the heavier it gets, the longer it takes for it to spin up. That's why smaller turbos um, on one hand are better, but on the other hand, they have to work harder. So, um, so anyway, you got to slow this thing down. So if you think about it, I open the throttle valve, the engine speeds up. And then if my fuel control system is com already compensated and set up to, to deliver the right amount of fuel per RPM, it's instantly going to start giving it more fuel, but the turbocharger hasn't done its job. So it's not providing enough air to the inlet to satisfy the fuel that it just got. You see the circular thing that's been created there. So if there's some way you could open the throttle valve, the, <coughs> the engine speeds up and then you tell the pump, wait a minute, you just hang out for a second, wait just a second before you do something here, um, everything's gonna be much better. So there, you have to build in a delay. So the way they build this delay is they put the aneroid, uh, which is a bellows that is attached to the upper deck pressure. So it's sensing what's going on in the upper deck. And then the way you do that is, let me go back to this picture here, because this one is just so simple and it would work. 
is if we think about, you know, if we were on a committee and we said, we have to figure out how to, how to make this happen, we could do this. We could say, wait a minute, let's go back to the basic pump here. And we think about what's happening with the basic pump and we would say, okay, so we speed up and more fuel goes and more fuel goes because this is restricted. So if we could find some way to take this restriction and make it bigger for just a short period of time and let fuel um, bypass more and then slowly start to come down, we'd have something. So it's really not hard to do. It's harder actually just to get my pen to work, uh, pen. So what I would do is instead of having a fixed orifice, I could have something with a tapered needle attached to a bellows. That's a nice bellows. Um, attached to a bellows. So, and then I would sh take this and shroud it all here and then build a line that goes up here and I would put two upper deck. And I think I just built it backwards. So um, I would do an inverted, let me think. So I have to think it through, so upper deck. So more pressure, more pressure is gonna squeeze this. And that'll be fine. So, so right now it's, it's like this. And if, see if I mounted it up here, so it's, it's kind of held here and the needle moves up and down, obviously. Um, and so right now it's at a certain point and it's um, kind of wide open. And in a minute, I need it to go more closed. So upper deck pressure is gonna come through. So I open the throttle and it should give more fuel, right? Um, but it says, well, I'm not gonna right now. Just because you open the throttle and just because you want more fuel, um, this way is easier because there's a big old space right here. So fuel's just gonna keep going this way, even though the engine started going faster. And, but you're thinking, wait a minute, you know, we need more fuel, but this is going to, nope, you don't get more fuel. Turbo speeds up, pressurizes this, because it pressurizes it, pressure, um, pressurizing it, it's going to now contract making this go the wrong way and make it worse. So I want an inverted needle, right? Yes, follow me. Yep, kind of like you. Like, so, uh, so it's connected to another one. So we will do. Yeah. I saw that big line across the top and I thought, oh, the upper deck pressure would push that whole thing down, but then that would defeat the purpose of the bellows. Yes, we do an inverted needle, so. Um, an inverted needle, there we go. I'll just exaggerate everything. So that, um, remember the potato chip bag, when we come down to altitude, it shrinks. So, of course, the drawing is silly, but as it shrinks, it is going to um, create more of a restriction as it expands. So we go up in altitude, potato chip bag, it expands, and now we have the very small area that's my restriction. But as upper deck pressure builds up, this is going to, an inverted needle will block more of this. And if it blocks more of that, then the fuel is going to go to the fuel control unit. So you just use, an, uh, again, a bellows to slow the process down and sense upper deck pressure. Wow, I hope you understood that one. Do I need to explain that one a little bit more? Yeah, I think the drawing, the drawing threw me off. The drawing threw you off? Well, then just close your eyes. I could, it's hard to draw an inverted needle in this situation, but it just, it's exactly what they're doing. They're running in, well, of course that doesn't work. I'm gonna have to try and think how to do an inverted needle. I'd have to get pretty intricate with my drawing to do an inverted needle, but I could always do something like this. Let me see. Just draw a bigger pathway and um, just draw it from there. Hard. All right. Pull this up and we'll just go to an inverted needle and say, well, there you are. Um, here's my inverted needle. There we go. Just ignore, but we've seen this before. But here, inverted needle. This is the same thing. Of course, this is the Bendix system. It's doing something completely different. So ignore everything except for right here. And what it would be is just the fuel path. Now I've got a fuel path that would come up and go this way and through, something like that. So as it is expands, it'll leave more room through here. So 
That would kind of work. I could draw something like that. Let's see. Maybe I should take a drawing class. So right there, I've got the orifice. And somehow I've got my bellows. with my very long tapered needle. There. Now as this expands, it's gonna let more fuel go, right? And as it contracts, it's gonna bring this triangle up here and start blocking that off. So that's, my, that's the best I can do, sorry. So right now, fuel can right, I get it. flow through here. And then as it, it contracts because of pressure, so of course I'd have to put this like that. There you go, upper deck. Upper deck. So upper deck pressure will make that do all that. So there we go, best I can do. You're probably just going, oh, you know what, just to stop with the stupid drawings already, I'll just pretend like I understand. All right. Um, was that all I had to say on that? Alderite moves tapered needle, which and then oh, see, see how it's come. fuel pump, and oh, there was more to that. And then point number one is an aneroid bellows in aneroid bellows moves a tapered needle. Tapered needle. Uh, in an orifice, in an orifice, which varies the amount, the amount of fuel bypassed. Uh, I could expand on that. Let me see. As upper deck. Increase pressure, upper deck pressure increases, increases to the correct pressure for the selected RPM. The bellows contracts, contracts and allows, allows um, less fuel to bypass. And more fuel goes to the Engine. Can I explain the relationship between throttle and upper deck pressure again? Absolutely. Uh, we are going to, when we talk about turbos, which is our very next subject, is actually three in one. It is magnetos, induction, and ah, magnetos, induction, and exhaust. So it's not turbos. Then what? Well, who the heck's turbos? Turbos guys in there. Must be in, in, in um, induction. I think induction is not turbo. Let's see. Yes, next section, magnetos, induction, which is turbochargers and exhaust systems. Uh, okay, so um, throttle and upper deck pressure. I don't wanna do this one. We have a problem with turbochargers and they just, they lag. 
Um, it's not terribly bad, uh, but if they're spinning really slow, it takes a while for them to spin up really fast. And these things go really fast. And so what's going on with this particular system and why we have what we have going on is because remember the pump or the system never considers the airflow. It's stupid in that respect. So Bendix wouldn't have this problem because we'd have air metering force. So even though you've asked the engine to go faster, the Bendix is going to say, well, wait a minute, well, where's my air metering force? And they'd say, well, there's not much air metering force and say, well, then I'm not going to give you any fuel because it's sitting there measuring it. But this is, is uh, blind to any sort of air pressure. So that creates a problem. So it's all based upon engine RPM. Now in a properly operating turbocharged system, if you just wait a second, literally, you're going to have the right amount of pressure out of the turbocharger coming across the throttle valve into the engine. But the fuel system doesn't know that. It's already set up for the proper amount of fuel pressure um, and fuel flow for what it's supposed to be doing in a minute. So for a very brief period of time, you're going to open the throttle, speed up the engine, which speeds up the pump, which sends a bunch of fuel into, into the fuel nozzles, and you're going to be really rich. And remember, you're trying to accelerate. So you don't want to suddenly go rich while you're trying to accelerate. You want to accelerate when you're accelerating. So this aneroid here uh, senses upper deck pressure, and upper deck pressure is the same word, same thing as turbocharger outlet pressure. So it just waits until the turbocharger outlet pressure has been built up, and then it close, uh, closes off the, um, the metering orifice inside the pump, and then sends more fuel on its way. Hopefully that made sense. MJ probably left. All right. Well, that's all I've got for tonight. You guys got any questions about anything? You're like, shit, no, because the guy's letting us go. I don't understand. Nope. All right. Well, who's going to put this mess back together and clean up my desk? Yep, I'm good. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I believe that might you be You got a little MJ for that, right? Oh, yeah, a little MJ, too. Uh, yeah, yeah. Ma mail it to little Kevin. What's that? Mail it to little Kevin. Oh, maybe uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> I mean, okay, so maybe. Um, I'm pretty much about done with this section. So uh, definitely, definitely, um, I'm going to have the, the other two tests. I know I haven't put the one up yet for the last section. I'll get those up. I'll, as per your request, I will make them multiple choice. But it's only yes, going to be please. about 10 questions and 20 minute max per one. So I'm warning you, you can't show up and start looking for stuff. You got to be ready to go when you open it up. Okay. 20 minute okay. max per question? No, for all 10. Two minutes per question. How much? Two minutes. Two mi is, that, is that enough? Daniel? Okay. That's yes, okay. That's usually a little bit longer. Even multiple choice. When is on it? Fridays. When is it we do? <laughs> what do you think is fair? Twenty minutes? Thirty minutes? I'll say thirty minutes a little bit, or twenty-five. I don't. Twenty-five. I don't want to short anybody, but I also don't want anybody who I won't mention to go out asking everybody for the answers. <laughs> I say. And what are you posting this? <laughs> so, okay. So why you, am I? You posting might want to create a different oh, when, for that when, person. Remember that this test counts the same as your, your Q and A quizzes that you can take over and over until you get a hundred. Okay. So the, it really doesn't have a, a large weight or bearing on your grade. In fact, you guys know you can go into your grades and you can do a what if, so you can just put in a zero and see what it does and put in a hundred and see how it changes your grade. You're gonna be surprised how little it probably changes it. So it's not like it's some big grade thing I'm looking for. Or it's going to affect your life here. It's for you to have something to understand and practice so that when you have to take this cumulative final that I'm forced to now give you, you're not gonna walk in going, what the hell is he gonna ask? I have no idea. You're gonna at least be able to say, hey, I took every one of those module tests Kevin gave me without looking up an answer and I did great. And so you know me, I'm gonna try and follow the same suit and make it very similar so that when you walk in and take the final, you're going to say, well, I did great on the other one. So obviously I was in tune with what he wanted to know and I'm going to be fine and you won't freak out. So 
Are we able Kevin, to open Kevin, up the first module test? And meeting. when is this other one going to be posted? The first, first module test, it's already shut down. Uh, oh, I wanted to see it. All right. Uh, <laughs> when, when is this one getting posted, though? Um, I probably won't get a chance to, to, to write it until this weekend. And then I'm going to give you the whole spring break. So it won't be due until Monday when we come back from spring break. Sweet. So you'll have, nice. uh, you know what? I might even um, keep an eye. I might even throw in one more because a lot of you just kind of screwed up and didn't get it. I'll maybe do a, a quick multiple choice again for module one. You guys be okay with that? Oh, yeah. Okay. So yeah. I'll make a multiple choice Hell for module yeah. one. Thank you very much. And uh, th that way you have a chance to increase your scores. So it'll be multiple choice. So I'll do three multiple choice, section one, two, and three, um, which will cover everything we've done so far. So, uh, multiple choice, uh, 20, 20, 25 minutes or something like that. And remember, it's, it's a tool for you to know where you stand. So if you get to a question where you feel like you need to go out and cheat, Stephen, then that's just <laughs> a clue that you need to study a little bit harder, okay? Uh, it's not gonna affect your grade enough to even worry about cheating, Stephen. So, and they're all going to be due after spring break, right? I think he left. And then, I know, I guess so. Stephen, are you with us today? No, I'm here. Sorry. I, God damn. No, it's okay. It's okay. Don't even have to explain. I'm just going to uh, mute you real quick. <laughs> okay, so. uh, Stephen, you're, he makes the class fun. So, um, all right. So that's what that's going to happen. That'll be due the Monday right before we start again. So you have the whole weekend plus the all week plus another weekend that we're off and then we'll, we'll do it on Monday. And since it's multiple choice, I don't have to grade it. You'll get your answers right away. Um, That's perfect. So when we get back, are we going to start module three then? Uh, actually we're starting module four. This, we just finished module three. So, so tomorrow we can, we'll start talking a little bit about module four. So we can take the tests for module two and three. Yes. Perfect. Yep. One, two, and three. I think one, two, one. Did you finish grading the written module one? No. You want to get off my back, man? No. <laughs> no, I'll probably do it Saturday. I've been a very, very busy guy. So, all right, everybody, have a good night. I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you very much. Bye. 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 Thank you. I'm going to Coachella next week, so I can't do the quizzes.